It's Chelsea. It's Nina. And, and you're, you're in the, the Critics' Kingdom. Hey, so today we're going to be recording for the 13th year, um, a Disney film, which is about a young boy who turns 13 and then suddenly starts becoming a mermaid. <laughs> um, unbeknownst to him as to why, he then teams up with one of his classmates and they try and figure out what's going on because he's like, I have scales and fins and that makes no sense. Um, according to biology. <laughs> <laughs> um, which kudos on him for figuring out because he's definitely failing biology at the beginning. Yes. Of this. Yes. So, yeah. Um, so that's why you always have to have a nerdy friend, guys. <laughs> um, so yeah, him and his nerdy friend figure out what's going on and that like 13 is the year that he turns back into being a mermaid. And then he also ends up finding out that he was actually adopted um, and his parents stole him from a beach. Yeah, I was like, adopted is <laughs> a very strong word. Quote, unquote, adopted. Um, his parents stole him from a beach, and you later find out that that's because his mother had had to put him on the beach for like five seconds while she or ran. On the boat. Or yeah, on the, on, back a, of the boat. on the back of a boat, which was their boat, because she had to get away from um, some fishermen who were trying to catch her. And uh, if she was only gone, what like not even thirty minutes, less. Yeah, and then the next thing she knew, he was on the beach and. His parents were like, ooh, a baby! <laughs> <laughs> and now he's ours, and we're not going to register him or any of the above things, I think as, they, as we can tell. I think they briefly said, like, oh, we went to the, the sheriff's office or something. But and honestly, no like, you. <laughs> it, obviously in, like, Orange County or wherever they are in California, the sheriff, this, like, small little town with the poor, they were probably just like, it's yours! <laughs> like, <laughs> you can have him if you want. <laughs> you can have him. We have no register about a baby. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, and then he ends up slowly turning more and more into a mermaid, and then we found out that his little nerdy friend's dad apparently saw his mom, like, 30 years ago, and ever since has, like, believed that mermaids exist, and his sole purpose now in life is to prove that, so once he figures out that, you know, um, that our main character is slowly becoming a mermaid, he's like, oh, I, I must have him. <laughs> um, yeah, so that gets a little dark. Yeah, just a little bit dark. Yeah. Um, and so then they end up, you know, figuring out how to all to live together and he goes back out to the sea to go live with his mom and she takes him on after that, um, because she's pretty much the only one that can help him because towards the end he starts being like, if I'm away from water any longer, I will die. Yeah, <laughs> it's like literal pains and other interesting moments of just like sickness. <laughs> He's like, you have to put me in water right now. Right. Um, or I... Actually, I mean, like, it's not clear, like, we'll die. It's just that, like, something untoward will obviously go down. Yes. <laughs> I will not be okay. Um, yes. Which is, you know, interesting in and of itself. I wonder if there's sort of a metaphor in there at all. About Being it. a human will kill you. That is the metaphor. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> um, so we are quite good at, you know, sickness and all of you. And life. death. Which, by the way, make sure everyone's staying healthy out there. Yeah. Keeping far away. Um, Chelsea and I are recording this from separate sides of the room. <laughs> so. But, um, yeah. And I think the other, like, big thing is that... So, up until now, he's been this huge, like, swim star. Like, yeah. He's, like, the star of the swimming team. He's, like, the Michael Phelps of his, like, high school. Yeah. And, th I th and that's why he ends up, like, meeting Jess... Uh, who is his, the one, who, the little nerd who becomes his friend, and, like, that's not really pejorative, like, he is entirely just the little nerd, that is what they, <laughs> he's literally, he's literally a little that nerd. is what they set him up as, um, they become friends because Cody, who's the swim team star, is essentially failing biology, and if he doesn't pass, he won't be able to swim in, like, whatever big meet, or, you know, right. there's always a big meet, and... So, like, the Jess's thing is, like, okay, like, I'll help you pass biology, but you will have to teach me how to swim, because mm -hmm. he's 13 and doesn't know how to swim. Um, and he just genuinely feels physically inadequate, which is not exactly false, <laughs> um, but, yeah. So, I don't know, general thoughts? It's cute. It's, like, a fun time. It's, um... I think it's one of those movies that, like, if you grew up with it, they used to play it a lot, so you're probably very familiar with the story still. Um, yeah. So it's, like, a good one. It's a fun one to revisit. Yeah, not gonna lie. It was definitely one of my 
favorite ones when I was younger. Um, but specifically for the reason that I, like, I've always really loved the water. Um, and I, like, love to swim. So anything that involved water when I was little was just, like, automatically ranked high. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, like, I always liked the girl who plays his, like, love interest in it. I think she's Samantha? called Sam. Yeah. Yeah, Samantha. In the, in the movie. Um, because she was on this other Disney show called The Jersey. I don't know if anybody remembers that show, but it was it was this amazing little show where it's, like, this... It's, like, I think it's, like, her and her cousin, and then they're, like, two friends. It's a very, like, rocket power type crew. But their grandfather, I think, like, died and left them this, like, old, tattered jersey. And they all love sports. Left them this old, like, tattered, like, ridiculous jersey. And they figure out that it has, like, magical powers. And so every episode when they put it on, they become, like, a different sports, like, hero. Or, like, Hmm. a different sport. Like, which is, like, what licensing did Disney have to get to, like, be able, I guess ESPN. But, like, to be able to, like... they owned ESPN then, though. I don't know. Yeah. But they had all these, like, sports stars on this show. And for very, for everything from... Like, I just distinctly remember when the black kid had to play hockey. Because <laughs> um, it's just like, well, that's just unrealistic. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, she was, like, my favorite character in that because, you know, I was a tomboy and I love, like, the tomboys. So it's like, this was, like, water, mermaids. Mm-hmm. Right? And not just mermaids, merman, right? Like... In my head as a child, I'm like, oh, we're flipping genders. Like, boys can be mermaids, too. Mm-hmm. And then, like, and then this, like, personal favorite chick. And, and I was a bit of a nerd. I was a, very much a nerd as a child. So, like, I guess I had a slight connection with Jess, too, and liked that Cody took care of him. Like, that made me happy. Mm-hmm. So I was like, yeah, no, yeah, they're not picking on the little one. That's great. And he's helping him. And I was really interested in marine biology. So, for all of those reasons, mm-hmm. I ate this joint up when I was a child. It's a good movie, honestly. It still holds up. Like, it's still a lot of fun. You still feel the, like, tension when Jess's dad, Big John, um, (laughs) is slowly, um, you know, trying to get Cody and, like, everything. Um, Yeah, it's, like, it it was a fun one. I think I enjoyed it a lot when I was younger, too, especially when, like, it's, like, 13 is always that age, I feel like, generally, where it's, like, things are supposed to happen. Yeah. (laughs) So it's either that's when you become a mermaid or that's when you get your Hogwarts letter or like <laughs> eleven for Hogwarts. Oh yes, yeah, it's, it's eleven. But, it's two years younger. But yeah, it's two years younger. But I do, I do just simply remember waking up and being thirteen, and it occurring to me that I there's no way that I would end up at Hogwarts now. Yeah. So that was a, that was like a sad. Not thing even to late wake registration. Up. Yeah, that was a sad thing to wake up. You were like, like um, I'm sorry, we had two people drop out. You want to join? <laughs> <laughs> that's like bar and bat mitzvah year. Right. You know, that's where like everybody's... 13 is a very important year. Yeah, that's when everybody's... It's time to become a man or become a woman or become a merman. Because sometimes that's what has to happen. Right. Um, and you got to, you know, find your roots and dis- and decide and discover who you're meant to be. Yeah. So, you know, it's a sweet little... Sweet little allegory for that whole process. Yeah, I feel like the only the only big thing that we had in general to note was just like his parents just picking him up on a beach and like boat, boat. <laughs> or, sorry from the beach from the boat from a boat that they had and uh, and then just being like so our child yeah, um, so this one is ours um, <laughs> which is very I mean it's it's an interesting thing because it's like all right so this is the one film where like. It start well. It doesn't start out because you know that he's like taken. No, well, not taken. He's left. He's misplaced. He's you misplaced. know that he's misplaced. But his mom actually knew right where he was. She just didn't think the boat would move. That <laughs> fast. That's very true. And she straight up hid him. She like covered him. She did in other things. It was like I'm gonna come back. But um, because I guess you know even underwater like there's drag when you try to swim with a little one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just like. This is, like, one of the few where it's, like, in theory, he has two live parents, yep. right, who love him and yep. take and support him. And There's like no deaths this in this one. No deaths. No deaths. And the, but it's a thing of, like, but even in this scenario, it's, like, it's still Disney parents fucking up. <laughs> right. Because right. they steal him. All right, all right. We have to stop saying that. They find him. <laughs> they find him. <laughs> they find him. <laughs> um, and they questionably get control over this child. But they also never tell him that he's adopted. Like, they never let him know that he's not biologically their son. 
And it's just, like, I feel like... I mean, I guess it's something that we've had to learn over time as, like, a culture. But I feel like by the time this came out in, like, what was it, 98, 99? Yeah, something in there. Like, we pretty much understood that, you know, like, don't don't lie to kids about this kind of stuff. Like, Not, t- the, just not the big know. stuff. Let them know that they're adopted. Like, they'll be okay. They will be perfectly fine. Like, you'll, Guaranteed. yeah, like... You just tell them that you love them. You give them that old adage about how, like, all the other kids just happen to their parents. I chose you. Like, all of that, right? And, like, they'll be okay. If they need therapy, it's therapy for something that, like, so many people need therapy for that they'll end up being fine. They will be okay. But it's, like, when you do this thing where it's, like, they're rolling around just believing that, like, everything is, like, regular and adorable, and then you tell them that they're adopted. It's, like, yeah, it makes perfect sense that kids would grow up, like, after that point, having a deep mistrust of, like, you and everything. Right. Because for at least a solid portion of their life, everything was a lie. 12 years. 12 years, like... 12 years a lie. And you wouldn't have told him if he didn't start growing nope. scales. Nope. Like, it's literally... He would have literally no. never found out. Oh, and, to... he, and he has, like, weird electric powers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah weird, like, electric things. Like but sparks. if that didn't start happening, you literally would have let him just continue to believe. He literally would not have known probably until he went to college and had to go to the, like, doctor or something. Yeah, or, like, what's the medical liver? history? Exactly. And until he parents needed like, something. Oh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, like it's 1957. <laughs> yeah, like just that. as a general rule, if you adopt the, tell the children. Just tell them. Just tell them. You just avoid so much issues. So if you do many that. issues. Um, but it was also nice to see him reunite with his mom at the end, and like, yeah, I feel like that was like a big thing where it wasn't that he chose his adoptive parents or like chose to stay in a place that was uncomfortable. You know, <laughs> um, the choices. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> he's going to be very uncomfortable had he stayed, <laughs> but, like, it wasn't, like, some, I think, an easy, an easy rap where it could have just been, like, oh, we figured out how to get his, like, merman things, like, simmered down so yeah. he could just stay on land forever, and it's, like, no, like, he needs to go be with his mother for a couple years. Yeah. And, like, At least. learn how to be, like, a mermaid because that is literally what he is. Yeah. Um... So that part was cool, too. Um, also, Uncle Joey from Full House plays his father. Yeah. Dave Coulier. Which is, is that like the only ser- that might be the only, I won't say this about the man's career, but it's definitely the only, like, semi-serious role I think I've ever seen him play. I'm trying to think. I think so, too. But I'm sure he's, I'm sure you will correct us, and I'm sure he's actually done other things. That's yeah. just all I can think of. Yeah. I mean, the man made boatloads off of, like, Full house. He's still he's making, still boat making boat money off of that syndication. So he doesn't have to do anything else for the rest Ever. of his life if he doesn't want to. Um, but he for the record, other. also, just because just we're quickly on things, um, in this period of like lockdowns and, you know, trepidation, um, I have been watching a lot of sitcoms on Hulu, and like all the sitcoms are on Hulu. Like, all of them. Like, Hang With Mr. Yeah. Cooper. Yeah, no, no, Step by step. Everything is on Hulu now. But just, yeah, but just, like, a note. Like, if you look at something like The Light to be Fun, this is obviously a Living plug, single. Yeah. It wasn't a paid plug. Like, this is just me saying it out loud. Cause I do there are it. quite a lot of sitcoms And it's on Hulu. very, it's just a nice way to pass time. Yeah. Other than that, would you show this to your kids? I mean, again, it's the thing of... I think this one is one where, again, it's an indifferent situation. Mm -hmm. Um, Because it's not a film... As much as I loved it when I was little, having rewatched it now, I'm in a very... Like, I'm in such a satisfied place with having rewatched it, where it's just like, I don't see any time in the near or even far future where I would feel the need to watch it again. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Like, that just doesn't feel like something that would have to happen. Um... So it doesn't have the replay value. It, yeah, and I don't think I think maybe if my kid like really liked mermaids or the water, you know, if it was a situation yeah, like maybe yeah. it was something like me where it's like they really where it like, like naturally fit in their yeah, interests, then it'd be like okay, cool, like I'll show you this. I'm like, hey, you want to watch like one of my like favorite merman movies as a kid? Um, but if if that didn't happen, like I don't know if I would. I don't know if it would even occur to me to go out of my way to show it to them. Yeah. And, but again, it's the thing, like, I would 
have no issue with them watching it. If they turned it on, I would sit down and watch it with them. I yeah. think that's what it is. Like, if yeah. they turned it on... Then you I would, would not yeah, I'd go like, out of your way to play yeah. it. Yeah. 13th year? You're watching 13th year? Let's watch yeah. it. But if they didn't... <laughs> if that didn't happen, like, I don't... It wouldn't be... <laughs> it wouldn't be something that, like, I would push on them in any way, shape, or form. Again, not because it's not, like, good or it's not... It's just... It is pretty... I would say it's pretty baseline and basic of Disney, and but on the, like, good side of that. Right. Like, it's a basic, like, good Disney film. Yeah. I agree with that. But it's not spectacular. It doesn't have anything particularly interesting or wise or clever to say. Yeah. Yeah, it's not, it's not a movie that is... Um... Not moral. It's not a moralistic movie, and, I feel like. Yeah, other is, than the parents, like, uh, but there's nothing really in terms of the that. kids. That's not even, like, that... Mo- it's, like, it's just, like, a thing about... It's art, not like, beating you over the head with a, like, yeah. the, a message, which I feel like a lot of Disney films do, where it's just, like, you know, like, once you start watching them, it's like, oh, this is about finding your roots. This yeah. is about, you know, blah, blah, blah. This is about you being an individual. This one is very much just, like, I mean, you know, he's a kid, he's a swimmer, and now he finds out that he's a mermaid. He has to deal with that. Yeah, like, like the, yeah, the, like the idea of it being like a find your roots, like true, like find your roots story is kind of, I think because I, I don't know if it's because it is a far fetched situation. It's yeah. like like what are the chances you're gonna find out that you're a mermaid? Right. You know what I mean, like because it's such a far fetched situation, it's just not. It's not something that you, I guess that you feel deeply as like a find your roots thing but yeah. again this is saying it from an adult perspective right because i remember as like a, as a kid really loving this movie yeah no i used to really like this one too so maybe to a child actually it is a very apt allegory for that situation and it is a very good metaphor for like finding your roots or like not shying away when your roots find you but yeah, yeah. i i would agree i'd say I'm also kind of indifferent on it, but I do think I would show it to my kids just because it's like it's like a fun, super light, like bubbly romp. Like it's just I don't know what else to call it. Like it, that's literally what it is. It's just like it's like it's like frothy, you know. Like it's just like it's it's not it's from all the kicking. Yeah, the it, it's just it's, it's just frothy. It's not like you're not getting the actual. The milkshake, you know? Like, you're not getting deep in there, but you're getting the whipped cream on top. The whipped cream on top is fun. Yeah. So, People always request the whipped cream. Yeah. Like, people like that, and I feel like, especially for kids, like, it's just... It's very, yeah, it is very easy. It's very palatable. Yeah. I didn't have questions when I was little, and, like, rewatching it, I get why I didn't have questions when I was little. Like, I got it. Yeah. (laughs) It's, It's very... Very basic. Yeah, there's not much. There's not much. There's ironically not much enough, mine. it's very surface. Yeah, <laughs> like it doesn't really go that below the surface. It does not go into the depths. We never see the underwater kingdom of the Mer people. See, like, that would have made it fun. But and don't they kind of show that in Ring of Endless Light? Yeah, I, I think Ring of Endless Light is, is like the is better the version. Deep, of yeah, this. it's like the deep like. <laughs> <laughs> the much and that one's like sad and depressing it's like yeah. Misha Barton in her like sad and depressing phase like yeah. it's like <laughs> yeah. that whole thing you know there's like whereas, different whereas this is <laughs> this is the precursor I think they did this saw how well it was done and how or not how it was done how much people liked it mm-hmm. and then decided like oh we can adapt this book this book about like dolphins and loveliness <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a little bit more depressing because we have the precursor for knowing that people like water stuff right People and for the record, the chimes are back. Yes. The chimes of the mystics are back every time that his mother, Pops slow up. motion, rises from the under depths. Mm. And you only ever see the top of her, like, you only see, ever see her eyes in the top of her head. She no, you just see this. You see her chest. Well, I mean, yeah, maybe. You see her chest. Yeah, when she, like, couple, when she, like, yeah. you see her chest a couple times. Flips. But she does try to stay very. Yeah, you never hear her. Low. She doesn't talk because I guess she only speaks whatever mermaid speaks dolphin calls i don't know um, yeah I, I have no idea what they speak but um but yeah no you don't really see they don't really go too into depth on her character like it, it's just i think overall a very shallow character development type of movie yeah you don't find out too much about like anyone yeah <laughs> the single the largest character development is with two characters with his mother his land mother learning that like she, like, coming to a place where she is okay with letting her 
stolen child go back to the sea. Yes. From which he came. Right. Um, and, like, being okay with letting him go, even though she's going to miss him. And with uh, Jess's father, Big Joe. Big Joe? Big John. 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 Big John. Big John. Big John. Learning that he can't kidnap living creatures. Like, he can't do that. Yeah. It's not okay because you want something really badly to harm or keep a living creature against their will. Tiger King is out now. I think that's a lesson that many people could learn. Yeah. South of the Mason-Dixon line. I mean, they're up here, too. They said that they had people buying cubs all over, (laughs) regardless. They are up here, too. Well, you... Not in the the city. Oh, no, 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 no. There was this this sort of famous... I remember being in high school, and there was this whole case about this dude who, like, went to the emergency room one time, and he was like, oh, like, his hand was, like, fucked up. And he was like, oh, like, a dog bit me. And And obviously the doctors were like, that's not a dog bite. Which which fucking dog? Which dog was it? So that wasn't true. Come to find out what had happened was his tiger that he had lived in his apartment in New York City that he was feeding KFC. Oh, good God. (laughs) Bit him when he was feeding it one time, so he had to go there. But he also had an alligator living in his tub. And there was another animal, I believe, that was in the apartment, but I don't remember what it is. Um, but PETA had a field day with that shit. So I just, yeah, they are everywhere. Um, they are everywhere. But <laughs> up here, they have less space and like That's why too much visibility it. for them to like, and stricter enforcement of laws for them to be able to like truly be around. Create a private quote unquote zoo. zoo. Yeah. Why would you want a tiger in your apartment? Anyways. I was so confused. I was like, what do you alligator you in the time. bathtub? How like, does he bathe? Space. Yeah. You How does space. he bathe? He doesn't. Absurd. Um, but anyways, yeah, overall I'd say this is a cute, like, movie. I would show it to my kids. It's literally innocuous. I like I, that's like the best way to sh- to sum innocuous it up. Innocuous and surface. It's yeah, like, innocuous just, surface, but fun. You know, it's, it's still fun. the thirteenth year. Like, yeah, it's just, just is what it is. Still fun, but Disney has better movies. I think on like when you turn a certain age and like big transformation happening. Oh, for sure, for sure. Um, but yeah, I'd say overall it's fun. You should watch it with your kids if you want to, or give it a cute little rewatch if you are like feeling in the mood for a aqua film. It's a good like like third film in a decom marathon yeah you know yeah 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 i'd agree i'd agree it's with a, that. yeah it's like a nice one where you're like all right it's like, like some filler yeah <laughs> it's a good filler and you need a break from like the media you know you you put the good stuff around it and you just yeah that's in the, the one where you can have conversations about the last ones that you watched and restock the popcorn and all that good stuff Thanks for listening to this week's episode of The Critics' Kingdom. Don't forget to follow us on Spotify and SoundCloud so you can stay up to date, as well as interacting and letting us know what you guys think on social media. You can find us on Twitter at Critics' Kingdom and on Instagram at The Critics' Kingdom. We're excited to talk to you again next week.